So we are going to head into the Overholster Mansion. Um, it's one of the, it's a historical society uh, mansion for this area of Heritage Hills. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it's one of the first mansions that was built like in the early 1900s. So let's go check it out. This would everybody would enter, so we probably would have been shown in maybe by the housekeeper, and she'd ask us to come in, and she maybe would ask us to have a seat here in the receiving area. And don't you know the lady of the house made a grand entrance coming down those stairs? But check this out. This is a mansion taken from 235, looking west. So the railroad is right there by that telegraph pole that you see. And they're, today they're just, they're still there, right across between Broadway and 235. And today we have one square mile over, what, 300 historic houses. Mm -hmm. And this house was built for $38,000. <laughs> That's including the land. And this is all original. This is a 95 to 98% original collection. Only one family has ever lived here. No, it wasn't a big family. It was yeah. Henry and Anna and their only daughter, Henry and I own. Henry I own was born in this house in 1905. Grew up here, can you imagine growing up in something like this? Yeah. Lived here her entire life until in 1959, she died at the age of 53. Mm -hmm. She had cancer. Oh, no. She and her husband never had any children, so this house has never had any descendants after her. Her husband, luckily for us, in the state of Oklahoma, would give the house to the Oklahoma Historical Society, and he included all the contents. With it. So their clothes are still in the closets, books are still in the shelf. This is all original. Really? This first floor really has remained unchanged. Um, the walls and ceilings are hand stenciled and hand painted. Henry and Anna commissioned an artist to come all the way from London, England. It took him two years to do the stenciling. He lived on the third floor while he was on the project. The house had electricity and running water from the beginning. So this was like upscale. Yeah. Uh, living in yeah. for $38,000 in 1903. Those are all the original carpets. These are imported from England, Axminster and Wilton carpets. The furniture, most of it was in the home is from Europe. Even the woodwork is Antwerp oak imported from Belgium. The beautiful chandeliers and wall sconces were imported from Italy and those are all original. Um, it took the artist from England two years to do the stenciling and he lived on the third floor that's open for you today. I like to wonder what he thought coming from London, England out here to... Yeah, to Must have flat. loved his mind, <laughs> yeah. Even the windows, we have 109 windows in the house. Uh, the windows in this room in particular have the overholster crest in the center, the leaded glass. We had their windows restored in 2010. Okay. That's how we know there's 109 because they had to... Um, number each one of them. The largest pieces of stained glass are up the staircase. Um, they were made in, at the Ford Brothers Glass Company in Kansas City. And the lady on the left is supposed to be Mrs. Overholzer. The lady on the right um, could very well be her sister Hazel. Those are original as well. This house became the show place of Oklahoma City after it was built in 1903. You have to remember that's before statehood. Yeah. This was out in the country. And Henry and Anna were um, civic and social leaders. He was our county commissioner. He ran for mayor. He made his money up north in the railroad. He was in lumber. He was in mining in Colorado. He was in the iron trade. He was a very diversified um, businessman, an entrepreneur. And his reason for coming here to Indian Territory simply was because Henry Overholzer saw it as another business venture. So he brings with him lumber, building supplies. Yeah, I read that on your website. Yeah. Way ahead of the game, he uh, arrives here. Oklahoma Station was Tent City. He brings in lumber and building yeah. supplies immediately. He, he starts building this house, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And he marries Anna I.O. Murphy in October of 1889. Her father was Oklahoma's territorial treasurer, so she's from a prominent family. So together I call Henry and Anna the power couple. So needless to say, the once first this power couple, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this house became the social center of Oklahoma oh, City. Sure. So if we can imagine if these walls could talk and all the parties and entertaining that went along 
you know, in this in these halls. Uh, Henry Overholzer is known as Father of Oklahoma City because he did so much in developing Oklahoma City. His block of buildings and property would be where the Devon Tower and the Cold Court Hotel are today and part of Marriott Gardens. Okay. So, uh, however, he only lived in this house 12 years. He died in 1915. Mrs. Overholzer never remarried. She died in 1940 at the age of 69. Then her daughter died 19 years later. Okay. So, the longest anybody has lived here is 53 years. The house just turned 120 in October. Okay. So, I call it gently. Yeah. But her clothes are still in the closet, books are still in the shelf. This is an amazing time capsule here no just kidding. north of downtown Oklahoma City. So like we were saying earlier, these walls could talk, right? I mean, I have lived in Oklahoma all my life and didn't even realize that uh -huh. this was here or that. that, that I, I call it Oklahoma City's yeah. Downton Abbey because yeah. you see a lot of European influence. Mrs. Overholzer spoke fluent French, so you see a lot of Louis-esque um, going on here in this front parlor and you can tell what her favorite flowers are. Now the daughter's name was Henry I own and that is her in 1956 standing in front of the fireplace and you can see that not much has changed yeah. in this house. She didn't change this floor. She left it the way her parents always had it. Um, we had Carrie Underwood here. She did a photo shoot. This was her favorite room. I call this side of the hallway the lady side. Let me show you these two rooms, and then we can go upstairs if you want. Okay. Um, we had Sylvester Stallone here for House of King in July. Um, he filmed in this music room. The music room has Mrs. Overholzer's 1902 Kimball piano. That is an 1892 Regina music box. It still plays. Uh, you don't see very many of those. They were quickly overshadowed by the Victrola. Mm -hmm. So we have yeah. several Victrolas here. But Henry Overholzer purchased that for seventy dollars back in eighteen ninety six. So that was a lot of money. That was a lot of money mm -hmm. for sure. The curved ceilings add acoustics, so the music would flow from these rooms. You see why I call this side the hallway the lady side, because then across the hall I call it the smoking room, the original man cave. Check it out. <laughs> original furniture. Even the bookcase still has the family Bible in there. Um, this furniture was purchased by Henry Overholzer back in 1893 in Chicago at the Columbian Exposition. And that photo was taken in 1916 by Anton Klassen. And other than the chandelier, everything is still in this room. This chandelier was found in uh, New Orleans and purchased by Henry I. Hohn. And the one that you see in the photo is in one of the hallways. Okay. But I'm jealous because the inside have pocket doors. In the 40s and 50s by the daughter and her mother. Uh, but you'll notice how short the cradle is. And this is a landing. This is overhauls to place musicians on that landing for her fancy soiree, so you can imagine, or I imagine, like a trio of string musicians playing, um, and it would describe the musicians playing behind a bank of palms. So you're gonna notice in this house, which is really makes it stand out to me, is the wide hallways, the tall ceilings, they're 11 feet on every floor, which is kind of unusual. We also have 19 closets in the house. Now this first bedroom has always been a guest room. Um, this bed set belonged to Mrs. Overholzer before she married Henry. And uh, you can see it's not very long. Yeah. It's a little smaller. But of course it's, you know, it's wood furniture, very heavy. You have seven fireplaces. Um, the bathrooms, this is one of the bathrooms we're hoping to Restore this year and check out that tub. Huge. It's almost bigger than the bed. I yeah. know. <laughs> and then the sink, I love this sink. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then the second room, this room belonged to Henry. Um, he was ill the last um, four years of his life and pretty much bedridden and he stayed in this room. But this was his bedroom furniture before he married Anna. Okay. But you can see these rooms have a lot of windows. 
um, they're big rooms. Is there a significance for the book that's on the chair, or is it just? I it's been here in the house. I just thought it was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, one thing is Henry I own. She died of cancer. She was Christian Science. Okay. And I don't know if that has anything to do because that's kind of unusual. You know, yeah. it's prob probably why. Um, she died pretty quickly. She was fell ill in January and died in March of 1959. Oh, wow. So it was quick. That was quick. Mm -hmm. Henry Samuel. Um, Henry Samuel was born in 1890 and died at the age of eight months. So mm -hmm. he didn't live um, very long at all. Um, but that's before the house was built, and then they had their daughter. Okay, so that was their first child. Mm -hmm, their first child. Okay. But um, Jay Perry lived until 1991, so that's like modern, yeah. recent history. Um, but the books are pretty interesting. Um, like I said, most of them all original. A lot of them are school books. Even her baby book is still here in the house. So check out this room. It reminds me of I Love Lucy. <laughs> because it was 50s. That's Henry I owns um, dress. And of course, you know. Um, the twin beds, um, the large mirror, very 40s, 50s style. Um, but even the closet still has their clothes. Look at the shoes. But her waist is so tiny. Both Mr. and Mrs. Overholzer died. When they had company, this is where they entertained. Okay. Of course, you're going to be where the TV is. That's a 1957 television. And a lot of um, these tables are from Italy. They must have traveled to Italy quite frequently because even the painting of Venice. Now, isn't that Mrs. Overholzer? That's Mrs. Overholzer. And that's the dress she wore in the party. Uh huh. Right? She's wearing her Charles Frederick Worth gown from the House of Worth in Paris. And she um, attended the inauguration of President Kent McKinley in that outfit okay. in Washington. And then this is another reproduction of one of her dresses. And this was, you know, where she would, this was her day room. This is fascinating. That's a beautiful fireplace. I love that. And then she loved the um, European porcelain. You're going to see a lot of that around the house. And her own, her daughter likes the Asian um, porcelain. So we'll see that as well. Henry I own's room when she became a teenager. Um, later on, it was Mrs. Overholzer's bedroom. Um, Mrs. Overholzer would move to the pink bedroom, from the pink bedroom to this room after Henry I own and her husband got married. Look, Raggedy Ann and Andy. Even Raggedy Ann and Andy? In the 1900s. Mm -hmm. And later on, it was just storage because this wasn't a large family. There weren't any children. It was also a playroom when Mrs. Overholzer entertained. But these, all these items are Overholzer, and this was built in by the Historical Society. Okay. So when this house was built, none of these houses were here. These trees would not be here. Um, Henry Overholzer's row of buildings would have been where the Devon Tower and the Colcorn Hotel are today. Mm -hmm. So he had a very good vantage point to overlook his little empire over there. And then just to the east of us, you can see the Capitol today. And just over those trees. And so um, the family probably watched the Capitol being built yeah. back in those days because um, there's nothing out here. And when was the historical preservation started? Because I know that they were starting to start tearing down some homes, and so they started that so they could preserve them. I believe it was in 1969. Um, 
here down Hudson and 13th Street uh, was the Coal Court Mansion. Mm -hmm. And it was as grand, if not grander, than the Overholzer Mansion. Mr. Coal Court fashioned it um, after his family home in Kentucky. Okay. And an insurance company uh, bought it, and then they tore the structure down. Yeah, because I saw an old video, I think, on one of the mm -hmm. websites of mm -hmm. someone speaking out in front of it and showing how grand it was. Oh and I didn't believe that. I couldn't believe yeah. they tore it down. And they tore it down, and the, you know, windowless box building is still there today in a parking lot. Yeah. Um, and that galvanized the neighborhood to form Historic Preservation Incorporated, HPI, and that protects this area from any encro encroaching businesses after that. That's but great. you have to, you know, it's sad to think how many others yeah. met their demise uh, as business was encroaching north from downtown Oklahoma City. But we're lucky today we have so many. Yeah. One square mile with Mesta Park and Heritage Hill. So, in, so all these houses have a history on their own. And it's just fun driving up and down these streets is what I tell all of our visitors. So just go look. <laughs> so yeah. in October is our neighborhood home tour. Okay. I've got a brochure I'll give you. Yeah. As far as the mansion is concerned, I mean, like if you're getting the word out to the city or to people that live here, are there any things that people can do to help donate, to help with the rest restoration? Or? Of course, always donate. You can find, um, donate online. Um, you become a member of Preservation Oklahoma. Um, we're always looking for new members, expanding our membership. Okay. And that, you know, we advocate for historic preservation, not only in Oklahoma City, but statewide. Is there a place we can sign up for emails to get notifications of those events coming up? Yeah, if you will go to preservationok.org, I think there's a, a sign up place there on our website to do that. Awesome. So okay. if not, just shoot me an email and I can add you to our constant contact okay. list as well. That'd so. be great. Mr. Perry was updating the kitchen while Geneva, she was a cook, and her husband, they left on vacation. Oh, no. And while they were gone, he decided he's going to update this kitchen and surprise her when she returns. <laughs> so he puts in linoleum, he buys her this convection oven gas range, he puts in cabinets and Formica countertops, and he's getting ready to take out this original 1901 Detroit Jewel and Geneva comes home a day or two earlier than he expected and she walks in the kitchen and she tells him if he takes out her stove and she's quitting. That's why it's still there. Oh, great. And thank goodness she yeah, came home and she did. But I think she may have told him, just get out of my kitchen, don't touch another thing because he may have gotten rid of this 1931 Frigidaire. I've never seen another one like this. It's electric. The motor is on the bottom. Um, the right is refrigerator. The left is a freezer. See those ice trays? Because I'm afraid he would have gotten rid of this. The dining room is still set with her china. We can change it out. Um, but if you look at the ceiling, it's hand stenciled and hand painted by that artist from London, England. Except the pattern that you see on the ceiling, it's the design from her china. Okay. We think this is her wedding china. This is Limoges. Of course, she loved Limoges. And uh, Mrs. Overholzer entertained here constantly until she died in 1940. She always ate at the dining room table. And um, so all the parties that took place here, okay. because this is how we would know it's time to come to the dining room. Because we would hear the dinner chime. <laughs> You can kind of tell her style, everything matched. Even the stencil work on the wall matches the stained glass. Is there any significance for this portrait here? 
That is King Philip IV of Spain. Okay. That's a reproduction of Velazquez in the Velazquez collection. I think most of it hangs in the Prada in Spain, and I think some in the Louvre. So, and then just to the right of that curtain is the old telephone that was installed April 14th, 1904. Thank you That's very much. That's for the Heritage Hills Home Tour coming up okay. in October. And, um, this is a book that you will love because you've already done your homework. Um, early Oklahoma City photographs okay. are in there. Yes. You'll see Henry Overholzer's row of buildings there in the very first few um, pages. Yeah, I had read that, that he had, like, when everyone was coming here to settle, he uh -huh. was bringing train cars of lumber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was just an amazing man. Yeah. So, but yeah, this was his home. And, you know, this would. If um, these walls could talk all the Oklahoma City history that's happened yeah, was in these rooms, he incredible. would be so proud. Especially that his streetcars are back. Yeah. And the city's over 600 square miles. He would be thrilled. You know, then that's another thing he was trying to do is show the rest of the country there is prosperity to be made here in Indian Territory. Mm -hmm. So this was a stately home just north of downtown. Um, just. In a, in a fledgling city, so yeah. you've been really, really proud. That's That's awesome. Let me show you this. So, the house across the street is the Hales Mansion, and that is 24,000 square feet. Here? Uh-huh. 24,000 24, square feet. 24,000 square feet. Wow. And twice the size. Twice the size. <laughs> it, it, that was Hales? H-A-L-E-S. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he had a very large family. There's like eight or nine kids over there. Mm -hmm. um, one of the little girls, her name was Hattie Bell. And Hattie Bell and Henry I own were friends until they were adults. You might recognize Hattie Bell's granddaughter, Megan Mullally from Will and Grace. Okay, yeah. It's no longer in the family, but um, Hale's Mansion. It still has fresco walls and ceilings. It has a ballroom. It's amazing. You, you can Google Hale's Mansion, I believe you can find Okay. This is original ceiling, believe it or not. Um, these were horse stalls between each of these beams. Uh, you can still see the hay drops in the ceiling. And one of my favorite things is that noticing here. Um, this is where the horse used to chew on the windowsill. So we're standing in a horse stall. These are original doors that at one time went outside. Okay. So these are the hay drops? Hay drops, because upstairs was the hay loft. Okay. And it's also where the cook, Geneva, and her husband used to live. And they lived here until 1972. Okay. So we're talking again, recent history. We have, um, a small kitchenette. We have tables and chairs. Uh, bathrooms and a small, small kitchen. Not original. Mm -hmm. Not original. <laughs> Not original. Not original microwave. But this is available, you know, for events. Okay. So keep us in mind. All right. This is an old linen press. And there's a hose that I guess that you would spray the fabric. I don't know that this is original, but. Um, because you know those big long tablecloths would have been hard to press. Right. And they pressed everything. Pillowcases, tea towels. Right? Oh yeah, my grandmother used to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. She would press everything. But yeah, that's one of our little pillow press. Yeah. This was later a garage. Jay Perry, Henry Island's husband, he's the one that gave the house to state. He was an automobile enthusiast, so I have a feeling he's the one that put in the terrazzo. This was at one time covered in indoor outdoor carpet, and a few years ago we decided to pull up the carpet and we added lighting, um, we added sound and audio. But we were very surprised to find this beautiful terrazzo flooring. So I think he was going for the Jay Leno yeah. showroom floor. We're going to have the Easter egg hunt out here on the lawn um, coming up. And a lot of people from the neighborhood probably mm -hmm, come. Mm -hmm, yes. mm -hmm. The house, of course, has been a long time you know, centerpiece of the neighborhood. Mrs. Overholzer was known for her parties and gatherings, and the neighborhood continues to, to meet here to this day, so she'd be really proud. Yeah, that's awesome. 
it really brings a different view or aspect or uh, appreciation of the neighborhood itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you realize, you know, obviously being in real estate too, there's all these historical homes, but now, I mean, it really means a whole lot more than mm -hmm. that. Just showing all these off and, and seeing how people have really preserved them. Right, and in this area, one thing to keep in mind is the street names that we may see driving through Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And most of those families were the ones that built these homes, and um, not very many are uh, still in the family mm -hmm. name any longer, but it's fun to just drive through and um, just take in and absorb all the history that's yes. within these streets. Nice to meet you. Come back and see us. We will. And drive around the neighborhood. We'll do it.